Did you see Sam on the night of his death? He was here, quite inebriated as he often was. Coyote was working bar that night and she informed me that Sam was getting rowdy and belligerent with other customers. When I requested he leave, he refused. My bouncer, Mr. Clue, was off dealing with another issue, so I requested that Jake escort Sam out the back door to the alley. That was the last I saw of either of them. Why is this place called the Seamstresses Union? During the gold rush years, there was a census. The politicians wanted as high a number as possible to gain power and revenue. To bolster that number, they decided to include all the working girls, which there were many, to the rolls. Or, given the times, they could not list the girls' true occupation, so they entered them all as seamstresses. When a girl accumulated enough money to open her own place of businesses, own place of business, <laughs> she named it the Seamstresses Union, so potential workers would know that they would be treated fairly there. And thus, a rich tradition was born. So you're a former seamstress? No. Perhaps when we know each other more, I will reveal more about myself. For now, enjoy the union. One more question. Can you tell me where to find Coyote? Her face darkens. Would that I could. I have not seen her in two days. She is a smart woman, quite dangerous. But I fear for her. If she's smart, why fear for her? Because she is in a dangerous line of work, there is always someone smarter, more prepared. Her room is upstairs if you are looking for her. I invite you to examine it. You may be able to uncover her whereabouts. I would not normally betray her privacy in this way, but she's missed two shifts now. It cannot be reached on her comm. It is unlike her. If something has happened, I will not have inaction on my conscience. Here is the key. Alright, let's go. There's a mid-grade security panel attached to the nearby door. It's said to require a password for entry. Oh, I get to use decking? Holy shit! I never thought it was gonna happen. Hack that shit. Yeah, boy! Finally comes in handy. I'm snooping in a woman's... Whatever, a dressing room. Stuffed bear seems to be hiding something. Oh, it's not like it where it has like a penis coming. Okay, I don't know. Let's, yeah. Okay, it was drugs. All right, that's a little bit better. Or maybe it's not. I, I don't know. Let's just move on from that subject. There is nothing in here. Okay, I like how he just automatically knows there's nothing in here. He doesn't. Doesn't really rummage through it, just there's nothing here. I'm not sure if that was really a great use of my hacking, but what are you gonna do? Coyote's computer is ancient, probably fished it out of a junkyard. It doesn't even have a data jack. The cracked display is covered with fingerprints. Tapping the keyboard causes the dust cake fans to spin up. Only display on screen password? Without the password, the only other button on screen is a password recovery option. Yeah, but I'm a hacker, baby. This is no problem. Crack easily unhashes the password. Trust no one. And you are transferred to the desktop. The computer has a basic list of applications. Alright, calendar. Three days ago, meet with Delilah about gig. Today, meet Paco for date at Pike Place Market. Due in 30 minutes. Contact? Coyote's contact list is exactly one entry, someone named Paco. There's no conlink number or other contact information for him available. This does not seem like a very useful list of contacts. No, why does she even have that? Access history. A quick scan of her recent searches shows that Coyote has been reading a great deal about hellhounds. It also suggests more than a casual interest in vintage action figures. Okay, I, I don't know how that correlates, but yes. Coyote's bed is a diary with several papers sticking out of it. Alright, first paper. The receipt stuck between the pages and a diary entry. Alright, read the diary. I came back from my shift to find four of Paco's goons sleeping on our apartment floor. It's getting fragging ridiculous. I want to be with him, with the real Paco. But this cutter dreck keeps messing everything up. I love him, 
But he's totally different with the gang. It's how I make cash, baby, he always says. I try to tell him he doesn't need the cash. I can support us both with what I make of the seamstresses union. But he still goes on these runs. Those with these bozos all over my floor. I feel like he's just seen how far he can push me before I kick him out. I try to be patient. Why does it have to be all one way? As soon as the last cutter was out the door, I lost it. I told him if he ever pulled Drek like that again, that he would be sleeping in the alley. Of course, he begged and pleaded with me, telling him it wouldn't happen again. I don't want to deal with this anymore, but I don't want him to leave. It's the reason I got through all that stuff last year. Got my bartending license. Got this apartment and this life. I know he cares about me and loves me. More than his involvement with the cutters, I just wish I could slice out that gang from our life together. Slice out the fear that comes with it. What the hell am I reading? I don't know. Receipt? A receipt for a Browning Max power pistol from Gin Park downstairs with a note saying how big how big guns on hot women turn her on. Wow. Okay. Alright. Second paper. The paper has a handwritten poem on it and a diary entry. Of course it does. Sometimes it seems like Paco reads my mind or my diary. Maybe he does the latter. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised. Hi Paco. Ever since last week he hasn't mentioned the cutters once. Leaves the apartment with a see you in a few hours, babe. And returns later without comment. I don't know if it's really gonna help for us to avoid the subject and conversation completely, but I have felt better without our constant arguing about it. The last two nights I've come home from work to Paco waiting up for me, slouching on the old dumpster couch with a novel four inches from his face. I imagine that as I turn the key in the door, he perks up and makes himself look especially studious for when I get the door open. He seems superficially surprised to see me, but I love this little act. A poem? Why do I gotta read a poem? Let's just say that Paco should stick, to, should stick to guns and motorcycles and leave the poetry to others. Thank God. Third paper. There's a receipt and an old photograph stuck between the pages. Alright, what's the picture? Picture shows a young girl with caramel skin and dark brown hair. She has a snake wrapped around her arm, yet she's smiling. Back of the photograph has shadow scrawled on it. Okay. A COD receipt for a special order. Five pounds of zebra meat from Mari's Meat Emporium, located near Pike Place Market. Wow. Mori is uh, not doing too well in the future. He went from talk show to selling zebra meat. I guess. Alright, and fourth paper. A receipt for a wall safe installed near the bathroom door. Set to a combination of 342436. Excellent. Put it back down. Let's crack the baby open. The broken mirror is hiding a small safe. Input the code found in Coyote's diary. Safe, safe beeps cheerfully in response and the door comes open. Okay. I got a frag grenade. All right. A frame painting of the Chicago skyline done in stylized silhouette. Sand is littered with action movies and cigarette butts. You know, the interesting thing apparently about Chicago and the Shadowrun universe, uh, I don't know when the timeline is or whatever, but I guess at some point it gets completely infested with like insect spirits, which are like big bugs. And so now it's called Bug City, which is cool. I wouldn't mind playing like a section or something in Bug City, although I don't like bugs. I think it's interesting. All right, looks like Coyote kept her clothes in boxes on the floor. All right, well, I guess that's everything in here. Let's go share what we learned with Mrs. Kubota. Uh, do you know Paco? He's a ganger, a member of the Cutters. He's a good kid in a nasty line of work. I warned Coyote against getting too attached to that type. They don't live long. Have you heard of Mari's Meat Emporium? Her face twists in disgust. No, I am a vegetarian. So you've heard of it. I don't... Why are you lying to me? Did you know Jin Park sold Coyote a gun recently? I'd be more surprised if she hadn't. Bouncers can deal with most of the troublemakers, but around here you need a gun just to take trash out to the dumpster. Coyote has a date with Paco at Pike Place Market in the next half hour. 
If you would go down there, it might bring me peace of mind. I'll call a cab for you. Should be able to get you there in time. Gembat Kudasai. Good luck. Alright. Kind of just got wrapped up in this whole thing, but... Did you saw Browning Max Power to Coyote, the bartender? Hey, guy, I'm discreet. I don't talk about what my clients... I don't talk about what my clients or what they buy. Bad for biz. However, I'm sure she would recommend me if she was a customer, which I'm not saying she is. She can't recommend you if she's dead. Did she say anything about why she wanted it? All she said was she was looking for stopping power. He's back on the drama. Oh, did I cut off my line of questions there? Shit. Alright. Anybody else I can talk to? Oh, maybe I can talk... I like talking to Cherry Bomb. She seems interesting. Although I don't think I can. No. There's Eric. He's kind of a waste of life. Alright. I guess I'm just leaving then. Take a cab to Pike Place Market. Do it! You catch a cab from Touristville to Pike Place Market, an immersively quiet ride that takes you from probably going to be mugged to probably going to pay too much for your drinks. Compared to the urban wasteland of the Barrens, the downtown area is filled with modern buildings, lighted streets, and unbarred shops, all living beneath the shadows of massive corporate arcologies. For many... These arcologies are home. For others, they're hulking monuments to where the world went wrong. Famous for, for its fishmongers, Pike Place pa Market has been around since the early 1900s, overlooking the bay. Now it's a market for all things, legal and illegal. A melting pot of the haves and haves and have-nots. Even though most of the shops are closed, the sights, sounds, and smells of the market hit you from the moment you step out of the cab. Alright, interesting. Uh, Arcologies, as far as I understand, I don't think the 5th edition book really goes into it much. So I have limited knowledge. But I guess the, the Arcologies are just massive buildings and, like, complexes uh, for each of the mega corporations where just, like, hundreds or tens and tens of thousands of people all work. And, like, they live there. They live and work there. They live and die there or something like that. Like, the Renraku Arcologies... Like, they're, they're only allowed to marry other people that work for Renraku in the Arcology, or something crazy like that. So, they, yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. Okay. Alright, well, <laughs> I guess I expected something a little bit flashier. Oh, well.